10.2 Lesson 2, Plain Curves and Parametric Equations. Objectives for today's lesson, you'll be able to sketch the curve represented by a set of parametric equations. We did that yesterday as well. You'll be able to eliminate the parameter. We did that yesterday as well. But today we're going to see how we can eliminate the parameter uh, by using a trig identity to help us with the process. So that's why we're doing a different example today. And then uh, separate from that is objective three. You'll be able to find a set of parametric equations to represent a curve. So this is the same vocabulary that we had from yesterday's lesson. So you can refer to that. And let's take a look at what we have for today. Example three, sketch the curve represented by this set of parametric equations x is equal to 3 times cosine theta, y is equal to 4 times sine theta, and it is giving us the range for the parameter theta is from 0 to 2 pi. Sketch the curve represented by this set of parametric equations on the interval from 0 to 2 pi for the parameter by eliminating the parameter and finding the corresponding rectangular equation. So we'd like to do it this way, but first, before we do that, we'd like to just uh, maybe look at some points that we can plot. Because our parametric equations are defined in terms of the trig functions cosine and sine, we can choose special angles for the parameter theta. 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2, and etc. Because it's easy for us to evaluate sine and cosine at these angles. So for example, cosine of 0 is 1, so you have 3 times 1, which is going to give us 3. Sine of 0 is 0, 4 times 0 will give us 0. Cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2, so you'll have 3 times the square root of 3 over 2 for x. Uh, sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, 4 times 1 half is 2. Cosine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. And sine of pi over 4 is also square root of 4 over 2. Uh, square root of 2 over 2. So you have 4 times the square root of 2 over 2. Uh, cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. So you have 3 times 1 half, which is 3 halves. Sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. So you have 4 times the square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so 3 times 0 is 0. Sine of pi over 2 is 1, 4 times 1 is 4, and so on. So I'll choose some additional values for theta. Uh, maybe I don't want to choose as many, so I'll just choose maybe pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So cosine of pi is negative 1, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, sine of pi is 0, 4 times 0 is 0, 3 pi over 2, cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, 3 times 0 is 0 for x, uh, sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, 2 pi, cosine of 2 pi is 1, 3 times 1 is 3, sine of 2 pi is 0, 4 times 0 is 0. So if you take these ordered pairs and you plot them, this is what we will get. So we can begin by plotting points uh, such as 3, 0. That corresponds to theta is equal to 0. So that would be right here. Theta is equal to 0. Next we will, point, uh, we will plot the point corresponding to theta is equal to pi over 6. So you need to use your calculator to find a decimal approximation of 3 times the square root of 3 over 2, which is about 2.6. And then you have 2.62. So you have a point here corresponding to theta is equal to pi over 6. We will now plot the next point corresponding to theta is equal to pi over 4. So you need to find again decimal approximations for these two values which will give you about 2.1 for x and 2.8 for y. So you get about a point about here 
and that happens when theta is equal to pi over 4. Now, now we will go ahead and plot the point corresponding to theta is equal to pi over 3. X is 3 divided by 2, which is 1 and a half, and you need to use your calculator to find a decimal approximation for the Y coordinate. So that's about 1 and a half and about 3.5. So you have 1 and a half and about 3.5 right here corresponding to theta is equal to pi over 3. And then when theta is equal to pi over 2, you have the point 0, 4, which would be about here. And then uh, we go to theta is equal to pi, you get negative 3, 0, which is right here. That's corresponding to theta is equal to pi. And then you have 0, negative 4, which is over here, corresponding to theta is equal to 3 pi over 2. And then you have 3, 0, which is once again here, corresponding to theta is equal to 2 pi. So if you were to sketch this curve, you would start here at theta is equal to 0, and you would follow the points that we plotted earlier. So the orientation of the curve is counterclockwise. and you get this ellipse, the orientation of the curve is counterclockwise, as I'm indicating with my arrowheads. This is an ellipse. Of course, if you wanted better accuracy, you would do additional values for theta between uh, pi over 2 and pi, between pi and 3 pi over 2, and between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. What we want to do now is what the instructions are asking us to do, which is get the same curve, but we will call it a graph because we will have less information. When you say curve, you're talking about not only the graph, but also additional information given by your set of parametric equations such as the orientation of the curve and the points on the curve corresponding to certain values of the parameter. That's what we mean by curve. By graph we just mean the ellipse without the other information that we just mentioned. So sketch the graph by eliminating the parameter and finding the corresponding rectangular equation. We'll get the same ellipse but now we're going to do it by sketching the graph of the corresponding rectangular equation by eliminating the parameter. So let's see how we can do that in this example. Yesterday we looked at eliminating the parameter and for the problems that we looked at yesterday we were able to follow this procedure. We began with our set of parametric equations And what we did was we solved for the parameter in one equation and we substituted that into the other equation and that gave us our rectangular equation. For a problem like what we're looking at now, you don't want to do it this way. There is an easier way to do it. If you were to try to do it this way, uh, for example, let's say you have x is equal to 3 times cosine theta. To solve for the parameter, you would have x divided by 3 is equal to cosine theta, and then you would end up taking the inverse cosine of both sides of the equation, and it's not the easiest way to go about it. There is a, an easier way you can eliminate the problem for a problem. Uh, there is an easier way you can eliminate the parameter for a problem like this. Today we want to use a trig identity to help eliminate the parameter. So there is a trig identity that relates sine and cosine. It's called a Pythagorean identity. And here it is. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So how can we use that to help us eliminate the parameter? We would begin by looking at our two parametric equations and isolating cosine of theta in the first one and sine of theta in the second one. So how do you isolate sine of theta in the parametric equation for y? Divide both sides of the equation by 4. 
how do you isolate cosine of theta in the parametric equation for x? Divide both sides of the equation by 3. So what do you do at this point if you want to eliminate the parameter by using this trig identity to help us? You need to have sine squared theta and cosine squared theta. If you have sine squared theta and cosine squared theta and you add, you would get 1. So we need to do the following. Multiply both sides of each, uh, not multiply both sides of each equation, but square both sides of each equation. So we will square both sides of each equation. And when we do that, we get y squared over 4 squared is equal to sine squared theta. And we get x squared over uh, 3 squared is equal to cosine squared theta. And now what I can do is I can add sine squared theta, which is, of course, the same as y, squ y, to y squared over 4 squared. That's a square there, sorry. y squared over 4 squared. And add that to cosine squared theta, which is the same as x squared over 3 squared. And when I add those two together, that should be equal to 1. So sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So there I have eliminated the parameter. You no longer see theta, and you have a rectangular equation. Of course, I can write that as x squared over 3 squared is 9 plus y squared over 4 squared is 16, and that's equal to 1. So going back to what we did earlier, we were able to sketch the curve by plotting some points uh, using the table that you see on the bottom left corner of the screen. Uh, you can also get the graph, which will have less information. It won't have the information about the orientation or values of theta corresponding to certain points, but you can get the graph by looking at the rectangular equation that we just came up with and graphing it. So this is the general form of the equation of an ellipse. Uh, we actually say the standard form of an equation of an ellipse. The standard form of the equation of an ellipse. And there are pages in your book that you can refer to for that information. On page 697 of your textbook, you'll see the standard equation of an ellipse. And on page 701 of your textbook, you'll see the standard equation of a hyperbola. But even if you did not know that, you could uh, just get the x and y intercepts very easily. And that would give you these four points that are on the graph of the ellipse. And you can get the x intercepts by setting y equal to 0 and solving for x. So you get x squared o over 9. When y is 0, this term will be 0. So you get x squared is equal to 9, and when you solve for x, you get either positive 3 or negative 3. So that gives you uh, the two x-intercepts, uh, 3, 0, and negative 3, 0. And you can get the y-intercepts by setting x equal to 0 and solving for y. So when you set x equal to 0, you get the equation uh, y squared over 16 is equal to 1, so y squared is equal to 16. And when you take the positive and the negative square root, you get either positive 4 or negative 4. So that gives you the two y-intercepts, 0, 4, and 0, negative 4. So with the y-intercepts and with the x-intercepts, you can uh, plot the four intercepts. And knowing that this is the standard equation of an ellipse, you know that your graph will be an ellipse. So you can go ahead and sketch an ellipse having these four points. Now we'd like to go to our third objective for today's lesson, which is to find a set of parametric equations to represent a curve. So if you look at number 52, it states, find two different sets of parametric equations uh, to represent the graph given by this rectangular equation. 
and of course the two sets of parametric equations will both trace the same graph given by this given by this uh, rectangular equation but in slightly different ways or perhaps significantly different ways for example depending on how you choose the parameters you can determine the orientation you can determine the points that correspond to certain values of the parameter and as we will see later you can even determine by an appropriate choice of how you want to do the conversion to a set of parametric equations how fast the same graph is being traced so but today we want to just start by understanding that the same graph can be represented by different sets of parametric equations with different properties such as uh, Diff with different same graph but different properties for the curve such as the orientation uh, the points on the curve corresponding to different values of the parameter or even the speed with which the uh, the curve is being traced uh, so you will as we look at more examples you'll see how we can make certain of those uh, properties be present by choosing the parameter in a particular way. But right now we just want to look at the fact that we can represent the same graph with different sets of parametric equations. So find two, di find two different sets of parametric equations for the rectangular equation. So you can start very easy by just saying I'll let x be equal to t. If you let x be equal to t then y will be just 2 over x minus 1, 2 over t minus 1. So this would be one set of parametric equations and the graph would give you the same graph as that of the rectangular equation but there are many ways you can choose the parameter t. So in the first example I just let t be equal to x. So x is equal to t and y is equal to 2 divided by x minus t. But I have other options. One of them is I could let t be equal to x minus 1. What is x minus 1? It's the denominator in our rectangular equation. So if we let t be equal to x minus 1, then what set of parametric equations would we get? You would have to solve uh, for x. So if you solve for x here, you would get x is equal to t plus 1 and what would y be? You go to your rectangular equation and you would simply write 2 over x minus 1. Now we know that x is t plus 1 so we'll have 2 over x is t plus 1 so t plus 1 would be x and then don't forget the minus 1. So you do minus 1. So when you simplify, the denominator just becomes t. So that would be another set of parametric equations. Both sets of parametric equations will give the same graph, but you can trace each one separately to see that certain properties might be different, such as points on the graph that correspond to values of t. And you could also try to come up with other representations for the same graph, other sets of parametric equations for the same graph. See if you can come up with one that would perhaps change the orientation. So I'll leave that as something that you can try. And when you graph the set of parametric equations, compare the different properties to see, for example, where you're able to accomplish the task that I just outlined, where you assign a parameter so that when you sketch the curve for the set of parametric equations the orientation would be different all of them should give you should give you the same graph but different curves with different properties so today we looked at sketching the curve represented by a set of parametric equations we also looked at eliminating the parameter using a trig identity to help us and we just finished an example for finding two sets of parametric equations to represent a curve or to represent a graph and each set of parametric equations would give you cur uh, the curve which has the same graph with additional information such as orientation and points corresponding to values of the parameter.